Greetings, loyal followers of the First Order. My name is Corbin22, and welcome back to another 100 Point Squad build for Star Wars X Wing Miniatures. In this series, take a look at 100 Point Squadron builds and discuss their competitive viability in the Star Wars X Wing Miniatures game. Uh, tonight, we're looking at a highly fleshed out squadron that I've been practicing with on my uh, on the side. We've got uh, another Imperial build. This is kind of like the Mark III of my. Uh, I had two other squadrons before this that kind of have been test runs, but this one I find to be, well, it's basically the one that's so far made me, instead of broken me. We have a new ship that I got. We have a TIE Advanced Prototype, piloted by the Inquisitor. We have a TIE FO Fighter, piloted by Omega Leader. And we have a Rollgar TIE Interceptor, piloted by Carter Jax. And the idea behind the build, well, first of all, its name is Denied. Um, more specifically, it's the Denied Mark III. I've had two others before this. The first one I showed had Zerix, Zerix Strom, and another one I had in between this had Epsilon Leader and, or, um, sorry, Epsilon Ace and Dark Curse. Um, but this one follows the same kind of scheme in the sense that it practically denies your opponent uh, any modifiers or range bonuses or whatever. So, Connor, we'll get to that in a second, and we just uh, zoom over down to the squadron here. So it's, the squadron has been really fleshed out. Uh, Omega Leader has practically remained unchanged. Carter Jax has gone through a bit of change. And of course there's the Inquisitor, who is my new ship that I got uh, at a tournament that scored me fourth place and I was able to get him as a free ship. Uh, we'll start with him first because, you know, I'm very really eager to show off this new pilot and his amazing ability. Here we go. Coming straight out from the Star Wars Rebels cartoon, we have the Inquisitor. Coming in at a, excuse me, pilot skill of 8, he flies the Sinar Fleet System's TIE Advanced Prototype for the Galactic Empire. He has a standard stat line of a TIE Advanced Prototype. He has an attack value of 2, agility value of 3, a hull value of 2, and a shield value of 2. So he's basically a Imperial A-Wing. Uh, his action bar consists of the focused target lock, barrel roll, and boost actions. He costs 25 points to field, so relatively cheap. And his action bar consists of an, or sorry, action upgrade bar consists of an elite upgrade, a missile, as well as an everyday tile and modification. His pilot ability reads: When attacking with your primary weapon at range two to three, treat the range of the attack as range one. So this is a very, very, very powerful ability for the Inquisitor. Think Tycho Selchu, but rather than ignoring uh, ignoring stress when taking actions, this guy ignores enemy range combat bonuses. So doesn't matter what range you're attacking with the Inquisitor, as long as you're within their fire, as long as they're within your firing arc, you can be attacking at range three. It'll still be treated at range one attack. Not only does this mean the Inquisitor will always get that one extra attack die, but it also means the enemy will be denied um, uh, other uh, modifications such as auto thrusters. As long as you attack with the primary weapon, auto thrusters is practically non-existent in when you when you use the Inquisitor. That in itself makes this a very, very powerful ability. So if you use it well, the enemy won't even know what hit them. For his title card, the only title card that can this, this thing can be equipped with is the TIE V1. It comes at a cost of 1. It's a TIE Advanced Prototype only title. It reads, after you acquire a target lock, you may perform a free evade. So it's, like a, it's kind of like a built-in push the limit. Um, you take a target lock, get a free evade. Which is very handy because if you notice, the TIE Advanced Prototype lacks the evade action as um, in its bar. It has the focus and target lock. It has a barrel and boost, but does not have the evade. The TIE V1 kind of makes up for that. For as long as you keep taking a target lock, you'll always get that free evade. And then, of course, for his modification, I've chosen a Guidance Chips, which also came with the uh, TIE V1. It also comes with the Jumpmaster 5000 and, I believe, the Mist Hunter. Um, it costs zero points, so it's a very... It's, it's one of the best upgrades you can equip, and it states once per round, when attacking with a warhead or missile secondary weapon, you may change one die result to a hit result or a critical result if your primary weapon value is three or higher. Now, bear in mind, basically this means um, it makes up for the lack of having any modifiers. Guns chips, you fire with a secondary weapon that's a warhead or missile. If your primary weapon value is two or lower, it's a free hit. If your primary weapon value is three or higher, it's a free critical. Now. Just so we can clear some confusion, the TIE Advanced Prototype has a standard attack value of 2. While the Inquisitor's ability allows him to treat as a range, uh, treat the attack as a range 1 attack, which means he'll get the extra attack die, his primary weapon value will always still be 2. So that means if you're going to be using like, a missile, 
with guidance chips on the Inquisitor, you're always going to get that free hit. You're not going to get a free critical, just so we can clear the air from that one. Now, Elite Pilot Talent, we have Push the Limit, which I think complements the Time V1 title pretty well. Once per round after you perform an attack, you may perform a free evade action, showing free free action, showing your action bar, and then receive a stress. So push the limit, cost of three. Instead, everyone knows this card. It's a, fa it's a favorite on many veterans of X-Wing. You get a free action, but you get stress afterwards, which is fine. Because like with the A-Wing, the TIE V1 has a lot of the TIE Advanced Prototype has a lot of green maneuvers it can work with. It has all of its speed ones are green, so its banks, all of its banks and turns are speed one. Uh, all of its banks ones and turn ones are all speed uh, are all green maneuvers. So you could do a hard one, remove your stress, and then boost. It's basically like, you basically perform like, let's see, it's like 90, it's almost a full, it's almost 180 degree turn, pretty much. Um, then of course you target lock, you can target lock and get the evade and then you can push it. You're getting three actions in one turn. It's, it's, it's pretty much like Darth Vader, or if you're using like, uh, hmm, uh, Tycho with Daredevil and push the limit, that kind of thing, or, or Poe with BB-8 and push the limit. It's basically getting three actions, or just using Darth Vader with push and limit. Basically, it's for your three actions with this guy's three actions in one turn. For his missiles, you can kind of get a little creative with this one. I chose cluster missiles because um, they these have always kind of been a little favorite of mine ever since I first started playing this game. Attack value three, range one to two, has a prime as a cost of four. To read, spend your target lock and discard this card to perform this attack twice. So cluster missiles, you basically get two attacks, so three plus three, you get you get three, you get six dice in total. And of course, with guidance chips, every time you attack with this weapon, you're gonna always gonna get one free hit because of the guidance chips. So you can always you you don't have to put them. You don't have to put cluster missiles on. You could put like ion pulses. You could put advanced toy missiles. You could put uh, concussions or even assault missiles. The squad point count. This the the squadron point cost of this squadron is 98. So that means you have a little bit of leeway with your clusters. Or if you wanted, you could take off the guidance chips and put on auto thrusters. It's, it's really your choice. But this is the build I've set up with for the Inquisitor. It's worked out for me so far. It could work out for you, but that's that's my that's my theory anyway. Uh, let's move on to his support ships, starting with the uh, one on the left right here. We got Omega Leader, a personal one of my favorite, um, a personal favorite of mine to fly when flying with the Imperials or the First Order. Uh, comes in a pilot skill of eight. He flies the Sonar Fleet Systems Tie FO fighter for the First Order. He has a standard uh, st stat line of a Tie FO fighter. He has an attack value of two, agility three, hull three, and a shield of one. His action bar consists of the focus, target lock, barrel roll, and evades. Cost twenty one points. His action upgrade uh, bar consists of an elite, a tech, as well as an unlisted title and modification. His pilot ability reads: Enemy ships you have locked on cannot modify any dice. When attacking you or defending against your attack, so Omega Leader, he has a target lock on the guy. They can't evade, they can't modify their defense. They can't modify their dice pretty much. So they're attacking you. If you have a target lock, they can't modify. They can't modify their attack dice. If you're attacking and they're defending, they can't modify their defense dice. Plain and simple. The idea behind him is action complete action denial on the target that he's uh, target lock onto. And like with the Inquisitor, he has a pilot skill of eight, so that means you can choose the order of which to activate these ships. You know, allows for e e allows for greater strategic value. His modification is a shield upgrade. Increases the shield value by one, costs four points. So that means with this upgrade, the TIE FO fighter has the same damage threshold as the TIE advance, the uh, standard TIE, the actual TIE advance, the TIE X1. Um, for his elite, we've gone with the Juke. Now this was meant for Omega Leader, this card, because it's, it's, it's brutal. Comes in a squad point, cost of two. It reads, when attacking, if you have an evade token, you may change one of the defender's evade results to a uh, focus result. So by itself, it's not really that useful, but if you put it on Omega Leader and if you have that evade action on him, oh my god, you're going to be scoring hits like there's no tomorrow. Because, again, target lock, the enemy can't modify their dice, you have juke, you have an evade, you can modify one of their evades to a focus. It's basically like crack shot almost. Only crack shot is one point cheaper and it's a one off, whereas juke is not a one off. And as long again, target lock, they can't modify their dice. So juke was meant for Omega Leader. To make sure that he always has an evade, his tech upgrade is a calm relay. Comes with a squad point cost of three, and it states you cannot have more than one evade token. During the end phase, do not remove any unused evade token. Do not you Yeah, so basically do not remove an unused evade token from your ship. So you take an evade action, as long as you don't spend the evade, you keep the evade with the comms relay. Added, uh, combining that with Juke and Omega Leader's ability, 
you're set up for destruction with this guy. Get in, uh, my advice would be get in close with this guy, pummel them at range one, juke them out, and then, of course, you have a target lock. If you need to spend the target lock, you can. If you need to spend the evade, you can. But, yeah, this is this is a pretty deadly combo, and I've used it many times, and it's 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 brutal. It's it's awesome. I love this combo. Now, moving on to the faster ship of the, two, of the three. We have another favorite of mine, Carner Jax. Coming in at a pilot's skill of 8 again, noticing a trend here. He flies the Sinar Fleet System's TIE Interceptor for the Galactic Empire. Standard stat line of a TIE Interceptor, attack value 3, agility value 3, hull value 3, shield value of 0. Uh, his actions consist of the focus, barrel roll, boost, and evade. He costs 26 points to field, and his upgrade bar consists of an EPT, as well as an unlisted title modification. His pilot ability reads, Enemy ships at range 1 cannot perform focus or evade actions and cannot spend focus or evade tokens. Again, like with Omega Leader, Connor Jax is, on for, is meant for full-on action denial. As long as he stays close, preferably outside the firing arc, but as long as he stays close to the opponent, his target, they can't do jack. The only thing they can do are target locks, and that's not going to help them much when Connor Jax is coming at them from the side or behind. Now for his title, gone with a roll guard tie. It's a tie interceptor only title, comes in at a squad point cost of zero, and it reads... You may equip up to two different modification upgrades instead of one. You cannot equip this card to your pilot skill value is four or lower. So anything lower than a Saber Squadron pilot cannot equip this card. Saber Squadron pilots and up can. Of course, as you can tell, it was meant for the Royal Guard tie pilots like Connor Jax, Kirk Hanos, and the Royal Guard pilots. You know. And let's see, for his first uh, modification, we have Auto Thrusters coming in at a squad point cost of two. It reads, when defending, if you are beyond range 2 or outside the attacker's firing arc, you may change one of your blank results to an evade result. You can equip this card only if you have the boost action icon. This is meant for interceptors or any ship that has the boost action icon. It's a godsend. It comes with the Star Viper. And like I said, like I just said, it's a godsend uh, against turret ships like the Falcon, the Outrider, uh, the the Punishing the punishing One, you know, that kind of stuff. It's And the Decimator, too. Like This thing is a godsend. It's, it's, it's helped ensure that many... Interceptor class ships survive for, for in the long run. For a second upgrade, I went originally with a hull upgrade, but I've changed it up with a shield upgrade to give him that extra. Both both offer the same thing. Um, hull value increases hull value, shield value increases shield value. But at least with a shield upgrade, for that one extra point, he's protected from criticals, which will help greatly. So he still has a damage threshold of four, but he has one he has one shield now. So he's able to take that crit. He's able to take that um, that crit damage that just happens to get by. And of course, for his elite pilot talent, we have outmaneuver. Coming out at a uh, cost of three, it reads: When attacking a ship inside your firing arc, if you are not inside that ship's firing arc, reduces agility value by one. So not only is Connor Jax denying focus or evades, he's also denying enemies agility. As long as you stay outside the firing arc. That, this this makes Carter Jacks a bomber killer or any ship that has an agility value of one or two. It's 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 pretty much guaranteed you're going to hit them, because they can't take evade they can't take focus or evades, and they can't uh, they can't um, they outmaneuver reduces their agility. So yeah, that's you know TDLR or TLDR they're fucked. Excuse my language, but yeah, that's that's really that's the simplest way to say it. So yeah, this is the Denied Mark III Squadron. This is how it's built. I'll return in just a second to show exactly how to implement it. And we are back. Okay, for this scenario, we've got three ships versus three. We've got Connor Jacks going up against Bosk in the YV-666. We have Omega Leader going up against a Black Sun so a Black Sun Ace. And we have the Inquisitor going up against another Black Sun Ace. And let's see here. Uh, both of these guys are taking a focus. Omega Leader's taking a focus, uh, Tire Lock and Evade, he's taking a focus, he's taking a focus. Uh, the TIE V1 took a boost action first to get close, and then he did a foc and then he did a Target Lock with Push the Lemon and got himself an Evade, that's why he's stressed. And uh, all these guys have pot skill 8s, so this has a pot skill 5, 5, and a 7, so that means all my TIEs are going to go first. I'm going to start with Counter Jax, because he's the closest one. He's going to get a range 1 shot on Bosk, so it's going to be 4. Boss would normally have his one die, but outmaneuver caused him to lose that die. So we've got zero agility, and he's got a focus modifier. So basically that, um, and of course, because he's range one, he cannot use, he, even if, if he could defend, because he's, uh, Connor's in range one, he cannot use that focus. 
even if he were, say, to attack Omega Leader, he still can't use the focus because Carter Jax is too close to him. Anyway, the four dice with a focus modifier. And we've got two hits of focus and evade. He'll spend the focus. Three hits, so. Um, why is that there? So, yeah, he loses three shields out of six. Next, we'll have Omega Leader. He's going to shoot range one on the. Uh, one of the Black Sun Aces, so it's going to be three dice versus two. Okay, hit crit focus. Um, I'm going to keep that result, so hit crit. Okay, so he's got two evades. Uh, I'm going to juke him with juke. Because I have a tire lock on the Black Sun Ace, he cannot modify that at all. Not that he can anyway. Oh yeah, he can because he has focus, but he can't modify that result because I have a tire lock on him. So he takes a crit, so he loses his shield. We have the Inquisitor. He's going to spend his target lock. And he's going to fire his cluster missile. So it's going to be another three on two, but I get two attacks. Okay, two hits. Guidance chip allows me to change that to a hit. And he's going to spend the focus. So he loses his shield. Next round, or next shot. Hitting two focuses, that becomes a hit because of the guns chips. Two focuses, so that's two hull points down. Let's get some damage cards on him. So he's down to two hull points left. And that's that. Now, these two guys can shoot. We're going to start at Boss, because he's the next higher up. He's going to shoot out of his auxiliary arc onto Omega Leader. So it's going to be three, three on three. Now, he's out of focus, but like I've said before, he's in range one of Connor, and Connor denies the ability to use focuses. So that means that is rendered useless. So he's got a hit crit and an evade, a focus. So that's rendered moot. Oh, that's going to hit me. So, uh,. I'm going to spend my evade to cancel the hit. The crit, now Bulba is going to use his ability to cancel this, turn it into two hits. So Omega Leader loses his shields, but that's okay. It's a good thing, a good thing I gave him that shield upgrade. Now, the uh, this guy is going to shoot range one onto Omega Leader as well. It's going to be uh, four dice versus three. And he's got a focus. He's got three hits and a focus. Now he can't use that focus because I have a target lock. So three hits. Oh, this, looks, this could be bad for Omega Leader. Yeah, so Omega Leader is out, unfortunately. So goodbye, Omega Leader. Sad but true. And this guy has no shot. So that's that. So that's how the uh, squadron is supposed to work, uh, minus Omega Leader getting killed. Let's put it back on there. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Any constructive criticism is greatly appreciated. If you like, you may use this build for any competitive or casual play, or you can tweak it or revamp it to your own specifications. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate your continued support. And remember, my loyal followers, the dark side will always be with you. Glory to the First Order!